Yeah, old friends means that, uh, well, we're seeing in our Krishna Consciousness movement, devotees year after year after year, and as is normal in the material world, as we see them year after year after year, the, the appearance gradually changes from boyhood, at least I joined, uh, I was al mercifully allowed in the door of this movement, in boyhood, practically, youth, and middle age, and quite a few of our godbrothers are passing on, leaving the body. So we can see this basic knowledge of Bhagavad Gita that Lord Krishna is speaking here by taking the, taking the knowledge from Shastra, we can see what's going on. Whereas people without this knowledge they're just totally bewildered. They, they have no idea what's going on. They, they're pashyanapina pashyati. They see people growing old and they see people dying all around them. But they, have, they don't know what's going on. There. And therefore they have so many philosophies. So, which they've dreamed up. But this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita is very basic knowledge that we're not the body. The body is changing. We're the soul within the body. The soul is not destroyed. At death, they're not destroyed at any time, nor is it possible to destroy it by any effort. We are immortal. So, of course, this knowledge gives a completely different perspective to life. And if we've actually imbibe this knowledge on more than the theoretical platform, then everything should be very clear. We often t discuss about giving up material desires, becoming free from desires for name, fame and glory, which is... If we think what Krishna Consciousness is, there, sh there should be no question of this desire for name, fame, glory. I'll make my mark in the world. I'll go down in history. My name will be up there with Ramanuja Acharya, Madhva Acharya. I'll be, I'll be a big devotee. There should be no question of that if we've, if we've understood the basic principles that we are eternal. We are eternal servants of Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We're simply meant to serve him. If we've understood these basic points, then we shouldn't we shouldn't actually have to discuss about giving up material desires. Because if we've understood that we're not the, the body, then why should there be any desires in relation to the body or the mind, which is the materially contaminated mind, which has nothing to do with me. It's really nothing to do with anything. And it's illusory. Just like what is what is the relationship of a bubble in the water? When the river is flowing along, the bubble comes up and it's not even... It, it. So, there's no point to make scientific research and write PhDs on a bubble. And there's no need to make scientific research and make PhDs on anything. In this material world, because everything's just like that, just like a bubble. We don't. It doesn't really. It doesn't have any significance. It's come and gone. Yeah, so the only thing that's worth discussing or thinking about is Krishna and Krishna consciousness. But. Maya rules in the material world. And therefore we ascribe importance to things which are unimportant. Srila Prabhupada writes about great persons of this material world like Napoleon and Hitler unnecessarily increasing the pages of history. 
you know, there's history books and then someone comes along and declares war on someone else and conquers all of Europe, which is just an illusion because he didn't, what did he conquer? He, an apparent control over some bubble like, the whole of Europe's just a bubble anyway. And so, and then, and then someone in the school has to learn it. In, in Croatia, you have to, the poor children in the school have to learn the, the history of Croatia. Of course, if you learn the history of Croatia in Croatia, it's probably different from the history of Croatia as described in Serbia. <laughs> so people are unnecessarily increasing the pages of history and making making trouble for living entities, namely school children. They have to learn all these things. Nevertheless, we do discuss. I'm saying that we, by just understanding this, simply by understanding this, one should be free of all material desires. That we're not the body, we're eternal spirit soul, we're eternal servants of Krishna. So that's it. Then there's nothing else to do but serve Krishna. But, but, you know what comes after the word but. <laughs> We are attracted to that which is against our self-interest. Even though Janiya Shunya Bishakaina, even though we know, we accept theoretically, we get our Bhakti Shastri degree. But Bhakti Shastri degree, that's good. But it doesn't mean that we are free from material desires. The real that's that's an examination, right? So you take your exam. The really you can when you're getting ready to pass away, or if it seems like you know you're 97 and a half years old and feeling weak, and you can keep your bhakti shastri certificates and your bhakti vibhav. You can show them to whoever comes, but. <laughs> That knowledge is good, but how we have applied it in our lives, that will be tested. Bhaktisha, I'm not saying we shouldn't have Bhakti Shastri. It's good to study all these things. But the real examination is how we apply that in our lives. So these, this, these verses here are very basic verses. And... From the beginning of Bhagavad Gita to the Akmi, or the highest point of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, well, there's a lot, it's a, it's a long way, isn't it? That we're not the body, we're eternal spirit soul. Even here at this point, Krishna hasn't introduced that we're eternal servants of Krishna. He's just introducing that we're not the body. The soul is eternal, the body is temporary. So from here up to Swarasiki Siddhi, Brajagopi, Dhan, from the perfection of the gopis of Vrindavan, their own, each one's individual serving propensity, how they serve Radha and Krishna. There's a long way. And our aim is to serve Krishna, to cultivate the serving mood to Krishna, which flourishes into love of Krishna, following in the footsteps of the resident of Vrindavan, especially Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught that the highest level of existence, the highest method of worship of Krishna is that 
conceived by the gopis of Vrindavan. So that is our aim. At the same time, especially as long as we are still afflicted by material desires, it's good to read these verses and consider them. Because material desire, yeah, even though we may theoretically understand we're not the body, but because material desire means that we're identifying with the body, that we haven't imbibed, we haven't fully accepted that we are not the body, we are, that we're not the mind or the contaminated intelligence or false ego. Therefore, we are, we're still trying to enjoy through that. So it's good to discuss these topics again and again and again. And of course, in our preaching activities, this, this basic understanding is the first revelation if, if any, for people coming newly, if they can understand this point that the body is temporary, but I am eternal. For, for, for persons to accept this is a great revelation. Even in India, people are supposed to be, most of the people we preach among are Hindus, and there's a, there's a kind of not really an understanding, but you could say a, a religious faith that the Hindus have, of most of them, that we change bodies. There is reincarnation. But they don't have any understanding of it. And, and to actually explain that, it's, it's, it's revolutionary in anyone's life. If we, if we can understand this, then you can't continue, if we've actually understood this, we can't continue to live our lives as we have done in ignorance of this fact. Because this fact of the, that, that the soul is eternal, the body is temporary, well, some people have the idea, well, that means that after death, everyone is liberated. But no. This knowledge put in perspective means that the body is temporary, the soul is eternal, but the soul in bondage has to take birth again and again and again according to activities performed in this life. So every action has a reaction. That should make us very careful how we act to understand the science of reincarnation and, and to understand what is right and what is wrong. How can we understand that? Tasmachastram pramanam te karya karya me vahasi gyatva shastram vidhanoktam karyam karta me harasi. Yes. That Tasmachastram uh, pramanam te understanding the praman, the evidence of Shastra. You could, as Srila Prabhupada often said, we can make laws in the assembly, in the parliament. We can make laws and according to what we think, we can say this is right and this is wrong. But there are universal laws which we may think this is right and this is wrong, but the, according to the universal laws, the government may say it's all right to drink alcohol. The government may allow it, but according to the laws of nature, it is sinful. It's not punishable by the government, it's taxable by the government, but they, in, in, by taxing in one sense they're encouraging, because they want taxes. So they're encouraging, but people don't know that there are reactions for this, sinful reactions. 
So, if you do know, if you if we understand this, this basic philosophy, that everything else follows from this. We're not the body, eternal spirit soul. There are reactions for sinful activities. Suffering is caused. The Buddhist says suffering is caused by desire. That's not exactly correct. Not accurate. Suffering is caused by wrong desire. They, they come to the conclusion that suffering is caused by desire, therefore we should stop all desires. But that's not correct, because desires cannot be stopped. The nature of the living being is that he's eternal, and living means, to live means consciousness, and consciousness means desire. We cannot be devoid of desire. But the desire to enjoy through this body is the cause of bondage in this material world. And the desire to serve Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is fully spiritual, beyond the material realm, that, that desire is not only not the cause of bondage, but it's the cause of liberation from material existence. So, Mayavadis and Buddhists, they consider that the desire to serve Krishna, that's also a phase of Maya. Because they don't actually know what spiritual means. So they presume that any desire is a cause of bondage, and therefore they become offenders to Krishna. Mayavadi, Krishna, Aparadhi, they're offenders to Krishna because they presume that Krishna is also something material. They don't, they take the ABC spiritual knowledge that the soul is different from the body, but without taking further or higher training, they make, they base their whole understanding just on the basic level. And therefore they, they make a great mistake of thinking that Krishna is material and therefore service to Krishna is, they'll take that, the Mayavadis will take that. Well, that's, that's a kind of sadhana to the Mayavadis they consider that bhakti is a kind of sadhana to help us to become purified, to come to the platform of jnana, to understand that that uh, everything is one, and and there is no mm, nothing beyond Brahma. Eko Brahma Dutiyam Nasti. There's only Brahma and no other second thing. And what is that oneness? Chin Matra. Just consciousness. Only consciousness. A very strange idea. Consciousness of what? Consciousness must have some object of consciousness. But they say that liberation means. Consciousness means there's Gyan. So they say Gyan is the ultimate. But gyan means there should gyan means knowledge. They say that gyan is so in, in only there's knowledge in the knowledge the the knower and the object of knowledge all become one, and then there's only consciousness, which is not imaginable, and therefore they say it's inconceivable. Well, we also say the absolute is inconceivable, but inconceivable in his magnificence but not in, not inconceivable to the extent that it's totally non just beyond the scope of any level of understanding like, like the there's a famous zen buddhist meditation on the sound of one hand clapping now it may sound very mystical but actually it's just nonsense that's all so, so this uh, same thing, this idea of knowledge, the knower and the object of knowledge all becoming one, or this, the seer, the act of seeing and the object 
of vision, all becoming one. What does it mean? And they say, well, it's inconceivable. Then you can say any nonsense. And then just, and then anyone says, so what does it mean? It's just inconceivable. This is the foolishness of the Mayavadis, which Srila Prabhupada points out here in the purport, and again and again and again throughout Bhagavad Gita, as it is. Bhagavad Gita is uh, excellent for counteracting Mayava, <laughs> which is another disease. It's not known in the Western countries by its name, but quite well established anyway. Hmm. Mayavad comes or the idea that everything is one, all is one. When there is some knowledge of spiritual existence but not, not it's some knowledge that the soul is eternal beyond the material sphere but no clear knowledge of the personality of Godhead. So, persons who are spiritually inclined, who, who don't have knowledge, of the, who don't have specific knowledge as given in Shastra from the person of the personality of Godhead, then their spiritual endeavors they, uh, they must come to this, to, to Mayavad. Because by logical, by a logical approach, it's not very difficult to understand that there must be a supreme controller. God, the supreme being, in the English dictionary, the word God is given as the supreme being. Being is a it's a kind of vague word, isn't it? It's just it just bees. It just exists. But it's very it's not it doesn't say the supreme person, it says the supreme being. So being could be could be anything. The supreme being, if we don't have specific knowledge that the supreme being lives in Vrindavan and plays on the flute, or resides in Vaikuntha with Lakshmi, if we don't have that specific knowledge, and then we'll just take the supreme to be undefined. If we don't have a definition, then either we define as a projection of our material understanding of what we think should be supreme. And therefore, we have the, the personal God conceived of by Michelangelo on the other side of the Adriatic in the Sistine Chapel in Rome as God looking like a very old man sitting on a cloud because he's up there we can't see him so he must be on a cloud and angrily looking down at all the people on the earth and sending down thunder thunderbolts to punish them so this is the highly intelligent person but without knowledge, his concept of a personal, personal God came to this. Just a projection of, of how uh, one who is regulating this world, who they conceive to be God as one who is one who regulates justice and gives good people their reward and punishes the bad people. So, seeing a lot of bad people and things that God's main function is to punish. And he's very old looking. He should look very old because he made the creation and became very old. This is very... Uh, when we get knowledge from Shastra of Krishna, then these ideas seem childish, which actually they are. 
It's childish <coughs> because without education one remains on the level of a child. So human beings may be educated in science, mathematics, history, geography, so many different studies. Now the popular study at the university is women's studies. It's completely useless. It's, it's feminism. Or just how women have been exploited and they should smash all the men to you know redress the balance of history and in uh, in England they have one study in the university football studies that's really useful for society isn't it so you can study so many things and then you become educated but without education of the nature of god then you understand, even though you may be a, an expert in women's studies or football studies or even something of some use to human society like mathematics, then uh, you remain childish. So people's concepts of God, even though they may express it in long words and big language, and uh, they're just foolish actually. I believe it was sometime in the 19th century that the Catholic Church uh, granted that women have souls. Otherwise, all the women before that, they didn't have souls. What happened to them? I don't know. I guess, dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And no hope after that. But then the Pope decided that they had souls, and then... Now all the women after that have got souls. The animals still, still didn't get souls. It doesn't, doesn't look like much chance of it very soon. Because God made the animals for us to eat. Right? So it's childish. It's uh, the, uh, the lack of not the lack of knowledge of God is startling in human society that, that if they call themselves Christians they've had 2,000 years to to get it together and they still they're backwards from what Jesus himself taught and what he taught is better than what's going what's being taught now so this shows he reveals various points. One point is that um, without higher knowledge of the personality of Godhead, then we remain, our, even if we are supposedly religious, then our knowledge remains child. Without being given that knowledge, we can't find it out by our own speculation. It's not possible. So we can't, we can't go further, we can't go higher unless that knowledge is specifically given. And it shows also that without a, without a proper parampara of realized souls to explain this knowledge, then everything gets messed up and foolishness in the name of knowledge prevails. So, this Krishna conscious movement has a great contribution to make to human society. We're talking about Bhakti Shastri courses. These are meant for systematically understanding the philosophy of Krishna consciousness so that we can present that for the understanding of human society, which is even it seems that people are beginning to understand that our our scientific progress or the, the whole march of human society since the days of the supposed enlightenment hasn't really helped us. That by the so-called enlightenment people should have become enlightened and that should be expressed in their behavior. But as was recently seen in this part of the world that uh, people can act in horrible ways many in this recent war which 
I suppose most of you in your childhood that would have been, is it? Most of you? What about you, Tirta? The war was when? You, how old were you during that? That mean in this in this nineteen or twenty, yeah. So in your youth, for most of you, so the, the, that so-called enlightenment and and the knowledge, and, but without higher without higher consciousness, without higher knowledge, people can very easily revert to subhuman levels of behavior. And it's not only here, but all over the world. What's being encouraged is like I'm saying, the governments are encouraging drinking, pornography, illicit sex in all ways. It's being encouraged for lack of knowledge and such a sad situation that they have homosexual marriages in churches. And even to speak against it is illegal. So this is what comes when, when there's lack of when there's lack of proper knowledge of the, of the goal to aim for to go up then we are left with our lower nature and to gradually come down and down and down to lower and lower levels that is especially the tendency in kali yoga so this knowledge is a great boon for human society if we are convinced then we shall be inspired to convince others. And there's great scope, isn't there? In Croatia, everywhere, there's great scope for spreading Krishna consciousness. It's as much as there ever was. It's, it's better, actually. The more we preach, the more we, especially the more we distribute Srila Prabhupada's books, the more the field, the more the field becomes ripe for people to take this. Especially as human society is going so crazy that anyone with a with a little bit of discrimination can understand that there's something very very wrong with human society, and there's the, all the present solutions that we're getting from planning commissions and interfaith conferences and all all it's not working. The the priests and the professors and all of them put together are not they don't have any solutions <coughs> so if we're convinced of this knowledge then we should be very enthusiastic to spread that to others and to demonstrate that to others Srila Prabhupada said that people would join our farm communities in their millions and it seems that now in the Western countries there are many people who are they're, they're looking for alternatives. They don't. They know the modern society is just a, it's horrible. They want to get away from the city life and live simply and naturally and organically. Because in the cities, everything you eat, everything you breathe, everything you drink poisons you. It doesn't nourish you as it should do. So people can under what people just from this people can understand what a horrible society that everything you do is, is simply fills your body up with poisonous chemicals which not only cause cancer and all kinds of horrible diseases but also they they poison the thinking system so that people they have so many there are so many causes of mental diseases and then emotional. Uh, disturbances so people can understand we need a better way of life but they can't generally they can't go beyond thinking let's just live peacefully in the, in the nature in the country but what for that they don't know so the Krishna conscious movement is meant for giving that information and for demonstrating that also practically by uh, the farm communities that Srila Prabhupada wanted to establish. So now it's going to be Gaur Arati. And then after that, if there are questions and answers, please write them down. And we can deal with them. We can have some more discussion. All right? Hare Krishna.